Welcome, Johnson Vars here. In this video, we're going to talk about configuring your own Obsidian Vault for playing role-playing games for solo RPG, doing world building or preparing those adventures for your group games. We're going to start from scratch, from the basics until very advanced canvas setups where you get to know some plugins and uh, some character sheet handling management tips and tricks and much more. Let's take a look at what will you learn by the end of this video. So this is an example canvas and we're going to go through how to get into this where you can have like your own character sheets loaded, even some maps, some note taking uh, notes in the canvas that are related or linked to each other and also a quick preview of your own detailed notes in your game folders. You can also from here zoom in or open this separately in a new tab. You're going to be able to split the data uh, that you have, perhaps open it in different parts of the screen so you can look at them simultaneously as you play. So all of this is what we're going to achieve. Just to show you another example, this is a fate game I've been playing recently. Um, if I zoom in a little bit, you're going to see some mythic um, cheat sheets, random tables, fate charts, some extracts I'm taking from books, and on top of that my character sheets, and so much more. So if you like this and how it looks like, and if you think this is a setup you would be interested in, which focuses on having both the big picture and a fast access to your most important parts of your game, then this video is for you. Let's start from scratch with a blank vault. Let's go. Great, so when we want to start from scratch, um, we're going to create a new vault. I personally use one single vault for all of my games, all of my RPG related topics, because that allows me to build a compendium of assets and utilities that I can reuse across all of my games. So the first game might be a little bit of effort, the second somewhat less, and then the third and fourth games um, are going to take much less effort because you're going to be using, if you follow the design I'm proposing, a lot of things you are doing over and over, saving you a lot of repetitive effort and making things much more convenient to get started. So one thing is for the vault, um, I'm going to create it um, in a mega sync. It could be Google Drive, Dropbox or similar. Uh, I have a folder with my vaults. Um, so I'm going to select it so it automatically synchronizes and access this vault from any other device or even my phone. I'm going to call this just RPG video vault for the sake of this video. It's just an example one. And you're going to start from scratch in the basics. So this is a blank obsidian vault. Some very early basics. I'm going to go super fast into how to write and take notes, which is the core of obsidian. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to create a folder because that's an organization point. Let's take a folder that's called um, I usually recommend having folders by the games you play, if you play multiple games like I do. For example, this game is going to be called Ghost Planets. Uh, it's based on a Fate World game. Let's assume we're going to play this game. So I create a folder for it. Inside a folder, you can create notes. Let's take an example note just so I can show you how to write notes in Obsidian very quickly if you have no idea about how it works. If you do, you might skip this section but maybe you learn something. Let's see. First of all is how to write titles. You do that with a hashtag. So title one is the biggest. Double hashtag, title two is a bit smaller. Triple hashtag is the title three, which is smaller. And four times title is title four size. It's the smallest title I think you can get. Next, you can do bold by selecting text and pressing control B. Um, as you can do when you click things, they're going to show the inners of Obsidian Vault, which is the syntax. Uh, this is called Markdown. When you click out, it's going to show the outcome of it or the result of this note. Um, another thing you can do is italic words with Control I. It's going to twist, shift it on the sides. And there's a bunch of others um, you can learn. A typical ones is also separating line triple dash, you press enter and it's going to add line. Um, you might have some snippets by having triple time this symbol here and say 
I want this is mostly for code or programming, but you could use it to separate dialogues, for example. Um, I'm sure there are other ways of doing this. Um, what else you can do here? I think this is the core basics. You generally don't need anything more. I'm going to show how to link notes a bit later in the video, but this is the essential basics. Everything you just need to write down is here. If you want to do some bullet points, you just add a dash item one, item two, item three. It's automatically going to list it. Um, another cool thing is the checkbox. If you want to have multiple options, like you do a dash um, and then some brackets with the space in between, it's going to do a checkbox. So for example, warrior, cleric, mage, and then whatever your character is, you select this one. Uh, we're going to see the strike through later how, how to get rid of this thing. Uh, ask me if I remember, I forget. Um, what else? Um, you can drop images and link notes. I'm going to show that later, as I said, but this is the basics of taking Obsidian notes. Uh, what's next? First is a bit of an organization round rules. This is a bit of planning how you organize your stuff. This is how I personally do it. Maybe you like it. The first thing I do is create an attachments or an assets folder. This is where I place my images, my PDFs, my soundtrack, whatever that's not a note. I put in a folder called assets and I started with an underscore. This makes it appear on the top of the folders list. So underscore assets. Um, it represents like as a shared folder that I use for a lot of things and this makes or keeps it clean. So what you want to do next is right click on it and press set as attachment folder. So when you paste an image, uh, it's going to automatically send it over to this folder. So it's not floating around elsewhere. This is very important. You can have as many internal folders as you might want to have. I personally use, for example, one for PDFs because I separate my PDFs like books and cheat sheets. Um, you might want to have, I don't know, tokens, because maybe tokens for battle, like this icon of a character, you might want to have separately, and so on. Important is that only one is marked as an attachment folder, where the junk goes to, the rest you have to manually take care of. Then we'll have this folder, one folder per game, um, and then you isolate everything that happens in each game into their own things. Um, Cool. I hope I'm not going too fast. Let's move on to the next point. Uh, the next thing you might want when playing role playing games is raw, uh, dice rolling. So for that, we need to learn how to install plugins. For that, we go to the settings, community plugins, turn on community plugins, browse and look for dice roller. You click on it press install, wait for a few seconds, then press enable, and that's it. What you have to do now to use it is if you look for it, um, you need to open the right sidebar, and there's gonna be a dice roller here. If your screen is smaller, it's likely that this is gonna be like this. If this happens, just scroll with the wheel until the dice appears. Um, and if you press here, you're going to get the dice roller tab. The easiest way of rolling dice just for you and when you're playing is right click on a dice. Roll a d20, right click, it rolls the dice. Roll on a d10, rolls on a d10. So that's a super fast, the fastest way you get to roll dice. Another thing you can do is customize. So for example, if you left click four times d6, you're going to get a four d6. You can add pluses here, like a bonus, and then press on the dice icon here to roll that, and you're gonna get the results here. Something I personally like is going to settings, uh, community plugins, dice roller, you can configure it with this icon here, and you choose this option that indicates always render dice, and display graphics for dice view rolls. Use colorful dice and you can explore these options by yourself if you're interested or not. 
um, but what this this does is enable you to roll 3d dice which is nice particularly if you're doing streaming maybe you want to roll dice directly on top of your notes or for yourself uh, this is really really nice so the next thing we might want to learn how to do is quickly getting images uh, that's not tricky we just go to a website where we can take images from for example pinterest you say i like this character you just copy the image and control v on a note and that's it um, you have the image right there as you can see there is a link to it and if you check you're gonna set assets the image is gonna be there so the image is part of your character notes there are two tips i want to share about this one is to learn how to take quick screenshots of anywhere in your screen and that's with the snipping tools in windows so you press windows shift s of this image let's say you just want to take the face and draw this and then quickly paste it in obsidian i'm gonna close the other one and that's the fastest way you can get or steal images from the internet for your private use in your vault um, the other tip i want to give you is install a community plugin um, called attachment let me check it's called attachment name formatting um, this is really useful for a specific reason and i'm going to show you why you're going to install it enable it go to the options and enable out make sure automatic formatting is enabled and let me check if there's something else but i think that's all we need what with this does is essentially the images you're pasting your notes it's going to rename them uh, you're going to say always update and it's going to automatically update the attachment file names based on the name of the note you're taking it in so for example this image instead of having this random file name is going to be called example note image one and this face here is going to be called example note image two so at least once you see it in the assets you're going to be able to recognize where are these uh, assets used or at least for the first time because maybe you are going to use them more than once later on or at least you can find them easily and identify them this way so those are the two tips and tricks for dealing with images in notes uh, let's move on to the next topic which would be handling character sheets um, character sheets for me in my opinion you have two ways of doing it and i can show you one is the text-based way like traditional note taking and the other one is uh, whiteboarding style uh, hang on for a moment for the first one is a typical let's say you create a folder called pcs inside your game this is what i always do and then you create your first character called john one way you do is create a note for him so you say starts and then you get something like strength 18 dexterity 14 and then you have skills also with the hashtag so it's a title um i don't know fight six um sneak eight etc right so you just take notes of your character sheet most important stats manually it's not fancy it's not special but it works now that we're here i'm going to make a parenthesis to show you how to create tables uh, because this is a very useful skill that you need to have uh, but first before creating and using tables i really recommend you install this community plugin called advanced tables it's going to help you do these tables i'm going to show you faster you install it you enable it and that's it the way you do tables is using the pipe character so you do pipe space the header name so header one tab um, a pipe again header two pipe 
pipe header three pipe and so on then you press enter and it's automatically going to add this enriched text table format what you want to learn here to do is to write down something by pressing tab you move to the next cell to the right another thing by pressing enter you go to the row below something else tab another yet thing tab to the third column um, blah blah enter next row and so on once you're finished you just press the arrow down and you close this table this is how you do tables so you might want to use this also for your character sheets like um, fight and sneak let's say you want to have a table for skills now this is quite a lot of manual work right each time you do a character you would have to do this this might be a lot there's multiple ways to do it maybe other people can do a better way my personal favorite is when i'm wanting to use character sheets simple way like this is to use templates how templates work you have to enable another setting settings core plugins it's called templates and you have to define a folder for templates so let's call it uh, we need to determine a folder here so let's call it underscore templates we didn't create it yet but we will and we will create a new folder called templates just to make sure i wrote it properly templates is templates so every template i create in a shared manner will be in this folder uh, you can explore later some details about timing and date formatting if you like but for this is enough what we're gonna do is assume this is my template for a character sheet i'm gonna of course remove these numbers right and this john i'm not going to call it john because john is a specific character i'm gonna call this character okay or pc character if you will and with this node which is located here i'm gonna to move it to the templates folder okay so now pc character is a template for a character when i want to create an actual pc i come to the pcs folder of my current game right click press a new node it's an empty node call it john what i'm going to do next is control p this opens the menu write down template the first option is going to be templates insert templates you just press enter so i'm sorry insert templates and then you choose pc character and it's going to bring that template bulk of text into here so here we have john and then we can fill it in with the values we want so very easily we can have multiple characters like i create a new character called laura control p template insert template pc character and bam i have the template to build Laura up. So I can create as many templates as I want for monsters, for vehicles, and have them easily reach up. So what's the most fancy method for characters? By using a plugin called Excalidraw, we browse it. It's called Excalidraw. We install it and we enable it. This is a fantastic module for doing whiteboarding. I'm gonna show you how it works. The way it works, let's say we create a folder in our game called maps, right? And we open, right click on maps. And instead of new node, we click on create new drawing. This will create an Excalibur draw node. We're gonna call it a battle map okay so now we can go for battle map look for a battle map in red in pinterest let's say you want to fight here copy the image and paste it here 
Um, and then you have a whiteboarding utility inside Obsidian, which is fantastic. In here you can do T for text, hello. Um, you can draw rectangles or circles. You can link them together. And you can write in rectangles. What you can also do is quickly bring characters as we did in the past. Like this guy here. Draw a rectangle as I'll show you. Paste it. And here we could have a combat map already. Okay, so it's not going to be full blown VTT, but it can do the job pretty well. We are now having a lot of progress. We can draw dice from here. We can have characters with their stats. Um, and we can have maps and drawings. So now to bring things together, I could bring Laura here to the right side. Then I'm going to drag and drop John, my other character, below Laura. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, you press middle wise, um, middle wheel button to open uh, a note in a new tab. So we open John and then we drag John's sheet to the bottom. We can drag this out. So now we have the character sheets on the right with the Excalidraw on the notes and we could open our example note as well. Bring it to the left of the screen. And here we could be writing out our, our session and uh, while playing maybe a combat here and taking some reference for a visual prompt. So I mentioned this for character sheets, so let's look into that. Let's say I want to create a character sheet, but using the character sheet of the book of the game I'm playing. Okay, so I'm going to open a new drawing and call it John but fate you know because i'm gonna use the fate sheet right so i'm gonna look for the fate character sheet and um, okay i'm not gonna spend so much looking for it let's say i take this one and paste it here make it big what we want to do next is right click press lock so we cannot move it accidentally anymore and now we just write on top of it. So name John. We can make the text bigger. Species human. And what you can do is maybe make this a bit smaller so the default font size matches the size of the text. Uh, and then you just write here like their skills like fight, st uh, stealth and so on, right? And then you can write, I'm pressing T each time I want to quickly write text, right? Stunts, um, plus two when attacking from, uh, and I don't know, unaware enemies, right? Super fast, quick sheet, traditional RPG style, like pen and paper on screen. You can use this method or this method, whatever you prefer the most. Why would you prefer one or the other? Okay, the ones on the right are linkable. So notes can be linked. So for example, if I go here and I type Laura, right? And then I want to refer to this document. I will do it like this. I'm gonna open double brackets and type down Laura. This is going to autocomplete for me to point out to the Laura node that I'm referring there. And this is going to create essentially a link. So whenever I click it, it takes me to that. I can also middle mouse button press it to open right away. So you could have like a node that has a list of your characters just to give an example, but you could also do John Fate link this cheat sheet here um, and open it from there. So Obsidian is great at linking things. If you're writing some world building and you want to fill it in later, so for something that doesn't have a note, so for example, John, this John is living in 
Cambodia and you want to make Cambodia a node later on to fill it in, what you should do is fill it in with brackets as if it were a node that doesn't exist yet. So you write down Cambodia. Um, that's the actual location, the file, uh, but you leave it like this. And then it's going to be a link a bit darker. What happens is when you click it, it's going to create a new node called Cambodia where you can fill this in and then you should move this into your appropriate folder. Um, there is a way to make like non-existing nodes be created exactly where you want them. Um, but I'm not going to look into or show you this. It might be a, little, a bit too much information, but ask me if you're curious about how can I point out to a node that doesn't exist, but when I click on it, to be created when I where I want exactly. So we can do character sheets in Excalibur. We can roll dice very quickly. We can create template nodes. We know how to organize the folders with our characters and attachments and assets. There's a lot of things already. Next is the PDFs handling. PDFs is a book. Let's say you want to have your rule books at hand. You just go to your whatever uh, PDFs that you have. I go to Fade and you can drop and drop it to PDF folders. So now I have the PDF here. Okay. This is a PDF reader. I have it now in Obsidian, so I can also point to it like for more information, read uh, Worlds on Fire, right? So that's a link. So from this node, I am pointing to this PDF. Um, cool. Another common thing. So you notice I put it on the PDFs folder because I want PDF separated from the rest of the junk. Another typical thing is form fillable PDFs. That's typically, for example, available in Mythic when you want to have form fillable lists. So I'm going to go to Mythic and bring the adventures features list to give an example to the PDFs folder. Um, so I ha it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to I can fill these PDFs from here. So but since I don't want to modify the PDF that I have in the PDFs folder because that's my template. Each time I use this, I'm going to have to make a copy. So right click, make a copy. Uh, it's going to ask you to save it. I did changes. I won't save it for now, but hang on. The copy, I'm going to bring it to my game specific folder. So Ghost Planet. Maybe I can create a folder called Lists, where I place this form fillable PDF in the Lists folder. Now I have the I'm going to rename it now, I'll call it Ghost Planet, uh, I'm going to call it Adventure Threads. So now I have the form fillable PDF and I can write it. The thing about this is that you have to, when you edit it, like thread one, event two, etc. Whenever you close this, it's going to prompt you to save it. You need to be careful. You have to save it exactly where it is in your Obsidian vault. So you have to go to your Obsidian vault called RPG Video Vault, Ghost Planets, Lists, and save, override that PDF that you have there. It's annoying, but it's how it is right now in Obsidian. Uh, each time you edit it, you have to manually save it and tell Obsidian to save it in the same location. So updating that PDF so the next time you open it it stores that information you added to the PDF another convenient way which you might already know um, by now is that you could as well just open an Excoli draw note a new drawing take a screenshot of that list bring it to it, make it big, lock it, 
and then write on it. So it's another way, it's not, you don't need a form fillable PDF, it's maybe fancier, um, but it does the job. You can also copy paste text to edit them later. Um, so it's another way. So now we know how to handle PDFs, how to handle images, how to handle links in notes, PDFs, maps, images, a lot of things. Template characters. I think you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, what could be next and the last thing is what we showed earlier in the video, setting up those canvases. So I'm gonna close everything with Control W to clean up. And I'm gonna go to Ghost Planets, the game, the folder game. And I'm gonna right click it and create new canvas. And I call this game. This is the game canvas. And look how easy it's gonna be. We're gonna bring our characters here, for example. John, the image version of John, or the template version of John and Laura, right? Um, and we are going to be able to have access to a visual representation that we create of all of the notes we've been taking. Uh, we can group things together. So for example, right click, select all of them, right click and then create group, call it player characters. So when I move these, it's going to move all together, all of these. I can also adjust these as I want. Um, that's one thing. I could also bring my notes here, like example notes. I could also write down some text by right clicking, pressing card, some text, which supports markdown. So I can add it hashtag to make it bigger. And with this button here, I can link it. I can drag, click and drag and drop here uh, to make arrows and link those arrows. If I double click on an arrow, I can add a text. Um, explained in, right? Just to give some examples, um, you can also bring the battle map we created, remember? You can make it as big as we want, so Canvas can represent Excalibur images. Something I want to add before dropping you guys, I want to show, I remind you that you can also bring some pictures here. So for example, if you look for a monster image, um, that you like, you just copy the image and you can completely and totally fine paste images in the canvas. Um, you can right click, rename them, monster one, and just like everything also link it to whatever you're working with. So just want to add that. We cannot edit them directly from here, but if we double click, it will open up. Uh, we can clean up this mess here so it's cleaner and we can navigate here and go back to the canvas. Um, to not interrupt the canvas, you can right click and press open in new tab. And then you can organize as I showed you earlier, the tabs so you can look at them all in sim simultaneously. Uh, you can also open some notes floating, right click, open in a new window, we'll create this floating note access which you can work on. The notes can also be worked right away from here if you really need to. So with this you just create an organized diagram of your game, you place your maps, world maps, story notes, reminders, and if you want adventure lists, the PDF, the form fillable PDF if you remember. So you can zoom in with control and the wheel button and edit it right away from here. Or the same as we did with the Excali draw version of this list, we can also show it here and it works exactly as well. I personally prefer Excali draw images, um, but maybe form fillable PDFs are much more structured and uh, more straightforward. So with these guys, um, of course, I could go on, but I think we've seen plenty. You've learned how to create maps, characters, templates, the dice roller plugin, the advanced tables plugin, attachment formatting. As you can see, it will not work on on images and attachments in the Excali draw, unfortunately. Um, 
but uh, you've got plenty here to do. If you like this video, I know it's a dump of information, but with this video you're more than ready to design your own notes, create your games, start reusing the stuff you're doing here, um, linking to each other the notes and do so much more in Obsidian, roll dice and have fun. If you like this video, please let me know. Let me know what else would you like to learn or what can I share you. Um, and enjoy, have fun. That's the primary goal. Bye bye. This is Jensen Vars. Drop me a coffee if you'd like to support me.